Ayurvedic teacher and registered nurse, Amy Pruitt. I'm therapeutic yoga teacher, Lisa Dumas. We named this podcast, The Radiant Warrior, because we all feel like we're at war with ourselves sometimes. And we need support to learn from our challenges and expand to the next version of who we are becoming. And for us, the practices that we've drawn from, the wisdom traditions of Ayurveda and yoga, bolster us in the real world challenges we face in our lives as women, mothers, daughters, and friends. Ayurveda's simple guidance helps us cultivate enhanced radiance and vitality. And the skills we've acquired from therapeutic yoga soothe an anxious mind and body, inviting contentment and connection to the part of us that isn't afraid. The Radiant Warrior Podcast is yoga, Ayurveda, and real talk to reclaim a courageous heart. We're so grateful to all of you for your responses and reviews. Reviews are a wonderful gift to a podcaster because it helps us grow and become visible to more people. A great way to tell us you value the show is by heading to the iTunes app to subscribe and to offer us a five-star rating. We appreciate you. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Amy. Where do I find you today, body, mind, and heart? Well, my body is back in Vancouver. Since we spoke last, I've been to San Diego and back. Last weekend here in Canada was our Thanksgiving celebration. So my daughter had a few extra days off school. We could take the opportunity to go to San Diego. Our daughter, Ellen, who is 25, and her fiance, Mike, were there as well. So we got to have this wonderful family celebration at our place there. It was fabulous. And also, just another note about something that I did while I was there is I taught my signature workshop, the Warrior to Warrior workshop. And I was so incredibly moved by the experience because when I lived there, I was fortunate enough to make really strong connection with some female friends and three of them came to my workshop and they all brought friends and it was such a moving and touching experience to be holding space for these people and see these friendships where time has gone by and you know sometimes long stretches of time has gone by between catching up with one another and feeling connected but the bond with those friends has remained so strong. And I feel so grateful for that. And it just shows you that you can feel so at home in more than one place. You know, as I come to love travel, I can feel at home wherever I am. So I definitely feel back at home to be back here in the fall weather in Vancouver. And I feel grounded here, but I also feel just as much at home in San Diego. So my body is here feeling grounded, recording with you. I have a shivering though, (laughs) one and a half year old multi-poo on my lap. (laughs) My, My puppy Bowie is very traumatized by the cooler weather outside and I need to go get her a sweater. (laughs) Seriously. I mean, I have to because we go outside and she just starts shaking and it's hard for her to focus on what she needs to do because her little legs are just shaking so much. (laughs) I know. So that's where my body is. My mind is feeling much more calm I'm coming out of a time of overwhelm because it was the reality of life. There was so much going on. There was so much going on. And we just have those phases sometimes. And I did a lot of practices to come to acceptance of that. And I reminded myself that everything is temporary. And now that fact is being proven to me because I feel a little bit more on the other side of a lot. So my mind is more calm. And because it's all connected, my heart has a more spacious experience. I feel more connected to my heart because I'm less in my head. That's the way it works. I feel more connected to the qualities of appreciation and love. And what was proven to me over the last few days, after feeling a little bit more calm and being able to more easily connect with this idea of contentment, is that things start to happen. You know, more of what I'm grateful for does seem to come into my field. 
So how about you? How about you, body, mind, heart? Well, listening to you talk about where you are, body, mind, and heart gives me hope because for me, my body is in Columbus and it's cold here and (laughs) I'm not looking forward to the winter. Um, We had our temperatures definitely have been dropping and, and that chill just seems a little foreboding. And my mind and my heart are weary and tired. And I'm just entering a move, getting ready to move next week. And with all the tasks and things to do and processes that you go through around a big move like this, as well as selling a house, I'm like worn out and beat down. And (laughs) Mm -hmm. so to hear you say that you're on the other side of it is very hopeful for me. And and it helps a lot. So I'm looking forward to us diving into this today. Well, you helped yourself because you recently had a day that was a lot. Like mm-hmm. it, it, it was a lot. And then what did you do at the end of that day? Yeah, I had a day from hell. <laughs> so <laughs> it was awful. And it was all felt very much out of control around you know, selling this house and, you know, having to put forth a ton of money and that I wasn't expecting to, you know, release out into the universe. And I felt very out of control and very sad and very angry. And so I had this awful, awful day and I felt that the only thing that was going to save me that day was if I went to the studio and I became a student and I took class and I sat through meditation class and then I sat through yoga class and oh my God, like we talk about these practices and we teach these practices and it, it is so true. Like just those two classes were really transforming to restoring some semblance of control and peace. And it doesn't mean that my day wasn't still awful before that it was. And I can look back with clarity and say, that was a terrible day. Like (laughs) it was awful, but it was such a reset to sit in meditation and then to take class as a student in yoga and receive and have somebody guide me through those practices, you know, with yoga and meditation, Shavasana and breath and connecting my feet to the floor and just feeling all the points where my body was, was supported by the ground beneath me was so healing and so needed. And yeah, so I was proven again that these practices do work and they are so vital to my own physical and mental and emotional well-being. And there's so many reasons that these practices do work. We're in the when we're in the midst of that kind of day, there isn't an opportunity to generally reset. Our mind is in reactive mode and it's so easy to get caught up into one thought building on another, building on another and spiral into an experience of stress both for the mind and the body. And the nervous system gets triggered and we get into a fight or flight and freeze. And we can very easily start making the situations that are happening in the present moment mean a lot more. We can say, oh my gosh, this is happening again. You know, thoughts like that, that can really bring us down emotionally. And then if we go to a class and Amy and I are going to start this conversation by talking about what can happen when we practice formally in the context of a yoga class, but there are ways that we can help ourselves in a very similar way if we don't have time for that class. But in a yoga class, there are a few things that are happening. We have to be quiet. We're encouraged to breathe long and deep, which is incredibly powerful and relaxing to the body. And it just lets all the systems of the body know that, okay, all is well. We're, we're not in any danger. We're safe. And when the body can relax, then thoughts can slow down. And even that just in itself creates some space to think 
thoughts that have a little bit more space and perspective. And then when we're invited to move our bodies in specific ways, we are releasing built up tension and science is caught up with what the mystics have known for a long time. Our experiences and our worries and our memories and our little T traumas and our big T traumas, they're, they're in the tissues of our body. And when we start to move, we start to move some of that and release some of that. Or when our energy is just out of balance and we feel so amped up and keyed up inside, you know, yoga would tell you that the energetic system of the body is disharmonized. Yet when you start to breathe and you start to move in time with that breath, it's almost like you catch up with that imbalance and everything starts to smooth out a little bit. So a yoga class offers so much in the way to calm us down enough that we can open up to perspectives that I think just aren't available to us when we're in the heat of the moment. I like how you offered that not everyone might be able to go to a formal yoga class. So I'm very interested to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And um, that is proven because even though I practice yoga every single morning and sometimes just for a few minutes and sometimes for a lot longer, what I have in common with you this week is that last night I went to my first actual yoga class in probably a month because things have been so crazy. And I, I'm a, I'm a teacher in this town. Like I can go to my studio classes, all these incredible teachers here in Vancouver, I can go for absolutely free. And I now live within walking distance of a studio. And I honestly still felt that I didn't have the space for the last month. So last night I felt that I did. And I went to a class that I had time for. And to highlight what we're talking about is that right before class, something happened that triggered an emotion of sadness within me. And so I walked into the class really feeling heavy and in my mind and making what had happened mean um, thoughts that created a lot of sadness and sorrow within I lay down on the mat, I started to breathe, and I started to move, and I started to follow directions. And within 10 or 15 minutes, I started to feel better and different. But what I also did in that class is I offered myself what I needed. Because, you know, if we go to a class, um, sometimes the class, maybe the sequence, maybe the intention, it isn't maybe what might be appropriate in the moment for our body. And this is not a conversation that it is an all in judgment of any fitness professional or teacher at all. We are all there just offering our heart and offering the best that we can in that moment. But I'm just talking about just even from a doshic perspective, even from, um, you know, we, we might somehow be out of balance in some way and certain styles of movement might not actually serve us. However, um, in situations where it's a yoga class or if it's another form of movement, there are things that we can do and ways that we can take care of ourselves, that we give ourselves exactly what we need. For instance, even though it's really challenging to do so, if I know that a certain movement doesn't feel great if I know that a certain forward fold doesn't feel great on my hamstrings and I want to come out early. It's, it's just a hard thing to do when you look around and everybody is still in that pose. But being able to come out early, if that allows you to keep your breath long and deep, that's really important. And what I did in this practice is I set my own personal intention. You know, I, I went and I said, this is what I need. And I like to really tether my breath into receiving what I need and releasing what I'd like to let go of. So I also believe that's why it helped me feel better and more spacious and more peaceful after just a few moments because I asked for what I wanted and I was very intentional in the practice. I was there to receive what was being offered but I also knew what I needed. And because it's almost a luxury to have the time to go to a class, I just needed to use it for the highest benefit yesterday. <laughs> but because this episode is about 
how even the daily grind can become a spiritual practice. What happens if we don't have time to go to a yoga class or, um, you know, we're not into yoga and we're people that for our movement, we might go for a walk or we might go to the gym. We might go to a different kind of exercise class, but we know that we need also a little bit of nourishment for our heart and our spirit. What can we do in other situations to make it more of a spiritual practice? So, There are plenty of things that we can do that Amy and I were just chatting about before turning on the microphone to talk to you. You know, when I go to the gym, because I also have a practice where I lift weights, um, I think it's important for women who are entering into their menopausal years and going through menopause to stay strong in the body. So it does work for me to lift weights. And when I do, I also lift my weights in time with my breath. I also use it as a time to feel grounded. I feel my feet on the ground. And instead of counting, I I do. I repeat mantra. I, I go into that practice asking, okay, what is it that I need? And it just helps my mind focus so my mind's not wandering off and not staying in the present moment. And I feel like I'm really cultivating an internal strength as well as an external strength. Hmm. Yeah, I... I had found in in the past that going to the gym, I really focused on all the suffering I was doing, you know, like, <laughs> like it, the, this sucks and it hurts so bad and I'm so tired and, oh, when's it going to end? And I will try that the next time I go to the gym to link my movements at the gym with mantra. That sounds like an entirely different experience than my past experience at the gym. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I believe in this concept of yoga as life. You know, there is yoga classes, there are yoga poses that we're doing on the yoga mat, but my entire life is my yoga practice. My motherhood is an opportunity for my yoga practice. The way that I care for the people in my life, the way that I talk to myself, it is a practice and it's, it's changing all of the time as awareness grows and new practices come into my life and it, and it changes as situations come up that you had no control over and you were not planning, but here you go. And now you have to deal with this. And that becomes in itself, that learning, the new opportunity to learn becomes a spiritual practice. This episode is brought to you by A Radiant Year our monthly program that sends you a class that we create for you every week, offering therapeutic yoga and Ayurveda skills to support you in practicing real self-care. We design these classes to help you integrate simple and powerful tools into your life to help you move worry and overwhelm and cultivate more contentment and vitality. Enrollment opens next on December 6th for you to join us for a radiant winter. It's your chance to gather tools to feel more vibrant and at peace during the shorter days and cooler weather. We'll begin on winter solstice. Learn and grow with us seasonally or yearly. Head to aradiantyear.com to get on the wait list. Going back to my day from hell, I was spiraling into the stories that I was making things mean things and, you know, being presented with things that I felt like were out of control, out of my control. Then I was making it mean that I should have done things differently or I should have been a better person or, you know, I was making all these things mean things that weren't true. Uh And that was a real state of suffering for me throughout Mm -hmm. the day because I was allowing my mind to go to these places and tell these stories that, that weren't true. And it didn't have to mean any of those things, but I think we fall into these patterns of belief or relating things to self-worth. And when I was able to make it to the studio and attend class, I was able to let all of those stories kind of fall away and connecting to the here and the now really brought me back to what's true and what's not true. And uh, I mean, wow, what a difference it felt like inside, inside my body, inside my brain, 
you know, it was such a more loving, kind dialogue that I was having with myself than when the day started to unravel. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to make it mean anything more than I had to write some big checks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that was it. And that didn't mean anything more than, you know, dollars and cents. And that was it. It didn't have anything to do with self worth or good or bad. But just making it much more neutral than it was, was, was really taking myself out of a place of suffering. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about how many conversations have I had with my husband where something has quote unquote, maybe gone wrong or unexpected. And I've reacted by saying something like, well, that's because I shouldn't have, or we shouldn't have, or that's a lesson that we needed to learn. I will usually make it as though something punitive is happening And it's important to remember that those sorts of daily life situations that will happen to us in this modern world, it's, they are neutral and yes, there are so many things that we can't control. And that is the (laughs) challenging, heart-wrenching part of life. But it's that concept that something will happen, you know, a moment of pain will happen, either physical pain or emotional pain, something will happen that first strike. But then we hurt ourselves a thousand times over because of what we're thinking about it and what we make that mean about ourselves, that we're bad in some way, that we made this awful mistake. When will we learn? And then the more of those thoughts that we entertain, the more come. And then what we're thinking creates how we're feeling. And then it's really hard to pull ourselves up. And that's why you and I today, we're so thankful for the existence of yoga classes. We're so privileged. We understand that, that we are able to get ourselves to a studio in order to experience a shift. But what if, for many different reasons, we can't get ourselves onto a mat and into a class? What are some very simple ways, even in the midst of the daily grind, that we can be helping ourselves? So one thing that comes right up for me is when I am forced to wait somewhere, you know, whether it is in the doctor's office or in the dentist's office or waiting for my car, those periods of time where it kind of feels like you are stuck waiting. I have found that those are some of my favorite times now because I can't do anything else. I do use that time for meditation. If I'm able to drop into that space. And if I can't meditate, then I usually have a book with me or a book on my phone of something that is inspirational or, you know, this something new that I'm learning. And so that's one period of time where I use that in a different way, where in the past I would have used that time to be irritated and annoyed and anxious. And why is it, why is this taking so long? And why am I being forced to wait? I'm very busy. I have lots of stuff to do and I need, you know, to get in, get out, whatever it was. And now it's forcing me to slow down. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're flipping and you're answering the question of how is this happening for me? And same thing. I, I always catch myself when I'm standing in line I'll notice when I'm feeling irritated and that my time is somehow, you know, more important. And I will too use that as an opportunity to, for me, it's to get grounded. It's to feel my feet on the ground and then notice what I'm thinking. And something else that I'll do in those situations, if I'm waiting in line, and that's when you'll notice a lot of other irritated people. And so I'm going to, I'm going to give away a lot of the little weird things I do in my head on a constant basis. But in those moments, that's when I'll practice meta. That's when I'll practice loving kindness and I'll offer, you know, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you be happy, may you live a life of ease. And I'll, I'll just sort of gaze around the room and not in a weird way, like not like completely (laughs) staring at people, but yeah, I'll just notice people and just send them a little good juju and And then I might encompass that to send that to people in my life that I'm thinking about. I guess I figure that we're standing there and thoughts will wander and thoughts can either make me feel more tense and more rushed, or I can surrender and relax into it, breathe, as you say, and then 
choose to do something more helpful with my mind. That's, that's something that I think about a lot is what would serve me when it comes to the contents of my mind and staying with what's in the day to day that typically happens for all of us. And how can we insert a little bit of meaning and purpose to that going for walks, even if it's very short, those of us who have dogs, it's something that we need to do. One way to go for a walk with a dog, especially when we need to leave the house, is to just want that dog to hurry up and do their business and feel really irritated and feel really rushed. Or another way is to look up. Instead of looking down, look up. And at Mm. this time of year, depending on where you live, there's a lot of beauty to see. Most of the trees here in Vancouver are turning. You know, the sky is always different. Take a breath smell the air, look at some quality of nature around you. It's very connecting. It's very heartening to be out in nature, to get some fresh air. There's a lot of positive that can be happening for us, even in a small amount of time. It's all about taking the time. It all comes back to being present. And then from that present moment, that's when we get to ask ourselves, is what I'm thinking about, is this train of thought, is this supporting my my greater intention for the day is this is this really supporting how i choose to show up in my life i think another one for me is driving in the past i used driving strictly to get from point a to point b and just as a means of transportation and now i really enjoy driving and i seek routes that are aesthetically pleasing, even if they're a little bit longer to get from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. I I notice the difference in how I feel if I'm stuck on a road that is full of strip malls and fast food restaurants versus on a road that has beautiful trees and might be along a river and it could take me twice as long to get there. But I have intentionally changed the way I drive so that I am not rushing from point from one point to another and allowing more time to get there, but arriving in a state that feels very different than if I have surrounded myself with like a concrete, you know, landscape versus driving through nature. So that's another one for me that comes to mind on how I can use the daily grind as a spiritual practice is my route that I take. To build on that, I'm remembering hearing you talk about that. Something that came from one of my first yoga teachers in San Diego, Sherry Shrek. She taught me this walking meditation and how to use the sense of sight as a way to bring in the surroundings. And I told her that I had a preference towards nature versus, you know, as you say, concrete buildings, and that's completely natural. But I want to offer something that she said to me. She said, well, is there something that you can find to appreciate about everything, like the the hard work that went into building that structure or the ingenuity that it took to plan that structure or what goes on inside or the people that are working inside and how um, you know, the families that they're supporting? And So I just wanted to offer that because I feel similarly to you. Of course, I would rather look at something that we've been taught is so beautiful rather than look at something that we've been taught isn't. But there's also another way that we can find some way to find appreciation in those moments, even if we can't take the time to find a prettier route. When I would go to the hospital, I would rush there, park my car, jump out of the car, run inside, clock in. I read about a OBGYN whose time was very limited. You know, she worked 20 hour days and she was always rushing to and from the hospital. And she would intentionally walk the slowest she could possibly fathom once she got out of the car. And not because she was dreading getting in there, but because she wanted to create that meditative state of feeling her feet on the ground before she went into the hospital and feeling the air on her skin and looking up at the sky and noticing the color of the sky or noticing the weather and having 
like a relationship with the weather. And that walk into the hospital was very different than my experience of hopping out of the car and running in and clocking in and not even noticing what the temperature felt like, or if it was sunny or cloudy, or did my feet even touch the ground from the car to the time Mm -hmm. clock. And that really struck me when I, when I heard that, and it did change how I entered the hospital because I entered so much more grounded and it was still walking from point A to point Mm -hmm. B, but having that specific time to really like really get grounded before I went in there. Yeah. It's making so many more of these daily activities in life more intentional. So let's talk about something that happens for all of us. And it's the time of hygiene and our human moments in the bathroom. So what are we thinking and what's happening when we look in the mirror in the morning? Mm. (laughs) This is something that I've been working on for a while. And I have to remind myself of this one. It's not second nature like so many of my other morning practices are. But when I look in the mirror in the morning, yes, (laughs) There there are thoughts that come that I've internalized about how I should look and how things are changing and and how I look in the morning and what I'm making that mean. And that doesn't make me feel very good. So I have a practice right now of being very intentional about speaking to myself very kindly when I look in the mirror, because you and I have talked about this. Somebody small and vulnerable is still inside of us. You know, somebody that needs all of our loving attention and the things that we might say to our face in the morning, we could not imagine saying out loud to somebody else. So something to think about, even if it's a looking in your eyes and being like, you're doing so good. You know, I I see Mm -hmm. you. I see you. You're, You're a good person. You're great. You know, for a lot of us, it might be a stretch to, to say, I love you, but maybe it feels authentic to just say, hi, you know, hi, I see you. I see you doing your best. Yeah. And doesn't everyone need to hear that at least once Mm -hmm. a day? Yeah. And we can't control that we're going to be hearing it from others at all. We'd like to. It's about asking ourselves throughout the day, what are our needs? Because we all have so many needs that are going unmet. It's just the way of the world. And we're putting off what we might need for our body and our heart to finish the work day, to get one more task done. And yes, we need to be spoken to lovingly. We needed to be treated well. You could take it a step further. You know, when your body performs functions that we completely take for granted, when our digestive system works well, you know, thank you, body. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because when it doesn't work well, that's that's when we really take notice. Yes. And some people would say that when we're focusing on what's going wrong, we are inviting more of that. So I I have to say, it feels good to me to be checking in with my body throughout the day and, and saying thank you. It's another practice that it takes a while to remember. But I have noticed if you take a moment and you bring your attention within your body and you bring your attention within your abdomen and to your organs and all the miraculous functions that are happening all the time, if you take a moment to do that, it's like the body has a response to your attention. It's like your very presence is allowing your body to sort of sigh with relief. It, it just, it seems to have a sense that you're connecting with it. That Maybe that sounds just a little bit too out there, but that's come with my continued practice of yoga nidra. That's my sometimes, very rarely lately, but afternoon practice instead of having a 10-minute nap, listening to the insight timer of some of my favorite Yoga Nidra rec- recordings. And that's it's just very beautiful relaxation that gets you into a very deep state of relaxation. And I often find as soon as my attention is into the sensations of the body on the outside and on the inside, there is a new level of relaxation that is available. And oh, that makes me feel so much better after. That's just my number one, my number one most important practice right now. 
is Yoga Nidra. And I think it really is important for all of us, but I'm speaking as a woman who in the spring is going to be 48. And, and I think these years are when I need to stoke and retain my vitality. And that's what Yoga Nidra is for. Or an afternoon nap, if you're not into listening to a guided meditation, it helps us to expand and retain our our inner vitality. And how often do we give ourselves or those around us permission to rest? We're so, as a society attached to doing more and being more and accomplishing more and getting all the things done and to, to take that time to take an afternoon nap. Like that sounds delicious and delightful and it needs to be more accepted. Yes. More accepted. I, I just started following this, this group on Instagram and they're called the nap Hmm. ministry and they promote napping as a spiritual practice. And it is the coolest thing because it is promoting self-care and restoration and rest and loving your body and giving yourself time and space to actually rest. And they create these beautiful setups for napping, like in these studio spaces and in these beautiful venues to all gather and nap. It is the coolest thing. And I was like, that is awesome. Napping as a spiritual practice. I can totally get down. This is what it's come to. We now have to go to a special place to give ourselves permission to nap, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm so glad there are so many health benefits for taking that break in the afternoon and, and closing our eyes. And you're right. Not too many years ago, I would have thought, oh, who has time for that? And not too many years before that, I used to actively say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. That's what I used to say. I too. I said that. I said that to my husband too. We can we can sleep when we're dead. I even put that on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh, how times have changed. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll start a new class at the studio. Oh, I think mm-hmm. that that would go over well. You've told me many times that Ohioans, Ohioans? Ohioans. You've mm-hmm. told me many times that Ohioans <laughs> work hard and you could start a napping revolution. I hope that they would embrace it and sign up, but I don't know. They do like to work. Well, you can let us know. You can, uh, you can head on over to our community on Facebook, the radiant warrior onto our page and let us know if you're in Ohio, do you want radiant yoga and wellness over there in Worthington to start an afternoon napping class? (laughs) (laughs) because i'll create one (laughs) and speaking of studios i don't want to forget that um that warrior to warrior workshop that i recently taught in san diego it's uh, all my favorite tools for soothing an anxious mind and body i'm going to be teaching that back here in vancouver at my home studio of semper viva next sunday that's october 27th um the last i looked it was almost almost full i haven't looked in the last few days but um you can go to my website, lisadumasyoga.com or Semper Viva's website to find out about that. It's going to be on a Sunday afternoon. And well, we do do yoga nidra as part of that workshop. So it's almost like going for a Sunday afternoon nap. Well, I think we gave a few yeah. good ideas for how even in the midst of a hard day, even in the midst of the daily grind, some of our day-to-day activities can be our spiritual practice. Just pick one. Yeah. Or, or think about it all day long. Like I do. (laughs) Okay. What can I do here? What what can I think about now? Oh boy. Yeah. But that's okay. You know, replacing more unhealthy habits of my past with, with more uplifting healthy habits. That's something that's worked for me. Yeah. You almost make me want to go (laughs) to the gym so that I can recite mantras while I lift weights, but I don't know. Let me know. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right, honey. Well, I hope um, you continue to move through the harder days, the busier days. And yes, trust me, you will come out on the other side. Everything is temporary. Thank you for listening to the Radiant Warrior Podcast. If you found it valuable, please leave us a positive review to help others find it. And please check out the Radiant Warrior podcast on Instagram and Facebook to leave us your questions and find out where you can come and practice with us next.